<laughs> for a rather damp one, shall I say, uh, for this Sunday, which is two things. It is the fourth Sunday before Advent, and it is also the celebration of All Saints and All Saints Sunday. Uh, and we've got a rather mix of those, haven't we, between the two, Dennis, really, but nonetheless. We're going to hear the, the reading on the sheet are for All Saints, but the ones we're going to hear are the ones for, uh, for Four Before Advent. Now, big event this week, though, of course, is All Souls Day, and that's when we invite everybody that's had funerals and bereavement ministry through us in the last year uh, back to church. So that's Tuesday evening at half past seven at St Michael's. If there's anybody you would like to remember, then there is a list at the back of church, I hope, somewhere. Yes, excellent, good, this is good. And uh, you can put their name down on that as well. We have a tremendous number of funerals coming through at the moment, I'm afraid. So that is uh, uh, something to pray for when we get to there. Um, notices that aren't on the sheet, though. First of all, a big thank you to everybody that's helped clear the footbridge on Aston Lane. Uh, that's a tremendous job. Thank you very much indeed, everybody. That's been very helpful. And then also to remind you that... Next week is the last day to get in your Operation Christmas Child's shoe boxes. And uh, if you want still to take one, with the leaf at the back, we'll get so what and all the rest of it, please see Mary after the service. I'm sure she still has some at the back there. Finally, Christine is asking if there's anybody who can help with cleaning the church for four weeks a year, and also anyone that can help doing the flowers for three times a year. If I, any of you could feel capable of doing that in any shape or form, please have a word with her at the end of the service today. As we go through the service, we're going to be singing the new Agnes Day, Jesus, Lamb of God. I'll ask you to play it once now, if you will, actually, just to remind us of it. And then we're going to sing lustily, aren't we, when it comes to the moment. <laughs>
Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are here, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthy magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry, Repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son Jesus Christ who died for us. Forgive us all of his past and grant that he may serve you in the union of life. For the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Book 
book of Deuteronomy. This is the commandment, the statutes and the ordinances that the Lord your God charged me to teach you to observe in the land which you are about to cross into and occupy, so that you and your children and your children's children may fear the Lord your God all the days of your life and keep all his decrees and his commandments that I am commanding you so that your days may be long. <coughs> Excuse me. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe them diligently, so that it may go well with you, and so that you may multiply greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. <coughs> Recite them to your children, and talk about them when you are at home, and when you are away, when you lie down, and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand, Fix them as an emblem on your forehead, and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ came as a high priest of the good things that have come. Then, through the greater and perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy place, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls, with the sprinkling of the ashes of a heifer, sanctifies those who have been defiled so that their flesh is purified, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to worship the living God? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gradual hymn this morning is number 39 as the deer pants for the water. 39. <laughs>
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. One of the scribes came near and heard the religious authorities disputing with one another, and seeing that Jesus answered them well, he asked, he asked him, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and beside him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbour as oneself, this is much more important than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any questions. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Now may I speak, and may we all hear, in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. St Paul begins many of his letters by addressing the Christian communities to whom he is writing as the saints and the faithful ones, and he goes on to bless them with the grace of God and the peace of Christ. Paul describes the Christian community as set apart as God holy one, God's holy ones, with the sacred call, the children of God. So, in the language of Paul, I greet you this morning as the saints who are in Aston and are faithful in Christ Jesus. And as we celebrate All Saints Sunday, we remember those who have lived out lives of holiness and we're invited to consider our response to that calling to be counted among the saints. In the letter to the Hebrews, there is a directive to pursue peace and holiness through the blood of Christ, without which, we are told, no one will see the Lord. It's a warning that in order to be inheritors of the kingdom of God, we are not to reject this gift of grace. And so it is on this day that we give thanks for the extraordinary outpouring of the grace of God upon human lives. The work of the Holy Spirit transforming the actions of ordinary men and women over centuries of Christian weeks. We recall those who, quote, shine like stars for all eternity. But perhaps more importantly, our celebration invites us to consider how we too might become living witnesses to holiness and bearers of the light of Christ. Once upon a time, the local saints and martyrs were the source of inspiration and legendary stories in the day-to-day -day of normal living. They found in their local tales of holy men and women stories of triumph over adversity, acts of glorious heroism in the battles against injustice, and examples of enacted hope and goodness in the midst of selfishness, greed and the darkness of the world. Just think of our own Saint Wolfgang and how he lost his life for faith. The saints depicted in the stained glass and in statues and in carvings are a record of marvellous stories of a better way and a brighter future. But we are all called to be saints and named so through baptism. So before we imagine that saintliness and holiness are unattainable to lesser mortals, let me remind you of some of the words of Saint Augustine. He is quoted as saying, Lord, make me chaste, but not yet. Um, some have the quote as make me good, but you can choose whichever one you want. Or the famous St Francis of Assisi, described as physically unattractive, possessing no particular gifts or capacities in his youth. Saint, Saint Ignatius of Loyola, who was badly disfigured in a battle as he had been hit by a cannonball. It ended his great dream of being a heroic knight of the realm. And it's worth pondering the fact that God so often chooses the most unlikely individuals of channels of grace <coughs> and holiness. All of us are the earthen vessels which have the potential to contain the treasures of the kingdom. St Francis became one of the greatest reformers of his age. The gift of St Ignatius to the Church was his profound writing on prayer in his book, The Spiritual Ex Exercises. All of them faced tough journeys of soul-searching in their lives, born of a growing dissatisfaction about the world they encountered. 
It led to transformation, not only of themselves, but the many who pondered their stories and found in them a source of encouragement of their own for their commitment to Christ. Cathedrals were once places bustling with pilgrims seeking favour and intercessions at the tombs of the holy saints they celebrated. For example, people now make the 92 mile walk between Chester and Litchfield on the two saints' way, between St. Werberg, who is of course the sister of our own St. Wolfad, and St. Chad, who is said to have introduced St. Wolfad and his brother Rufin to Christianity. For centuries, the Acts of the Apostles, the holiness of the saints, and the blood of the martyrs fueled the church with a fervour to follow in their footsteps. It gave them the faith to believe that nothing is impossible for God. That humanity really can soar to the heights of heaven, share in the life of God, and make a difference in the world. In later days, the saints lost their dazzle as people turned to scientists, inventors, and explorers to be the great lives that children sought to follow. Then it was the glamour of the Hollywood movie stars. And in more recent times, adulation has been directed at footballers and celebrities. But when it comes to saintliness, we only have to look at the news to be reminded once again of the ability to fall from grace. The abuse of power and lack of holiness that leads to scandal and shame, both within the church and on the spheres of life. Yes, we inhabit a world full of uncertainty, disappointment, bad behaviour and an increasing moral bankruptcy, when great institutions and those who are meant to be the exemplars in society are exposed for all their human frailty and weakness. Then disillusionment takes hold. But we are a people of hope, and from what I've read, the pandemic has led people back to faith, whether that's because it's easy to pop onto a Zoom service, or simply because during lockdown people couldn't go out, so were perusing their bookshelves and found a long unread Bible in there. I don't know for sure. Every day both pilgrims and searchers post up prayers of thanksgiving in churches and cathedrals to celebrate the outpouring of God's grace in their lives and the lives of those for whom they care. Every day members of worshipping communities gather somewhere to pray for the transformation of the world and the renewal of lives. And no matter how dark or uncertain life may be, we as living witnesses to grace and renewal have a powerful message to share. It requires us to be confident and obedient to our calling, keeping faith, celebrating goodness, getting alongside the lost and the perplexed with the life, giving, with the life-giving words about the message and story of Christ. And although it's sinners rather than saints who hit the headlines, the good news enacted in this Eucharist this morning announces forgiveness and the renewal of our lives. It declares that despite our human frailty and our failure to live lives of holiness, Every day is a day to begin again with God. And whilst the path of holiness makes demands on us that set us apart from many of the choices of the world, God wants to include everyone in the joyful life of the kingdom. There is grace aplenty. With God, all are welcome. The invitation is to saints and sinners alike. For those who have said yes to God's invitation, it falls upon us to step up to that calling and be part of the company of living saints, the great cloud of witnesses, to the way of Christ. And that means seeking to be ordinary, everyday saints, busy making Christ known, bringing hope, brokering peace, exercising forgiveness, making sacrifices for the sake of the gospel, and demonstrating Christ's message of love. Yes, that what we've heard a few times in today's gospel and in the service, loving God with all your being, heart, soul, mind and strength. We're all called to be the saints in Ashton, making a difference through faith in Christ and by the grace and peace of God. Let us pray. They left their mark on the earth for you, for us, for our children to come. Thank you, Father, for the tremendous sacrifices made by those who have gone before us. Bless the memories of your saints, O God. May we learn how to walk wisely from their examples of faith, dedication, worship and love. And so let us stand now and confess our faith in the words of the We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, made of our hands and earth, all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the only God of the Father, all of my God, God of my God, true God from true God. The begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came out of the heaven. What was it from the Holy Spirit?
are the body of Christ. By one spirit we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's give each other a smile and a wave as a mark of God's peace. We offer to him this morning 464, take my life and let, let it be. Very appropriate for Dennis's servant there one. Thank you. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, because we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to set before you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. And now we give you thanks for the glorious pledge of the hope of our calling, which you have given us in your saints, that following their example and strengthened by their fellowship, we may run with perseverance the race that is set before us, and we then receive the unfading crown of glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, 
we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. <laughs> as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes.
and giver of all good things. May we who have shared this at this table as strangers and pilgrims here on earth be welcomed with all your saints and the kingdom heavenly feast on the day of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. God give you grace to follow his saints in faith and hope and love and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Our final hymn this morning, 143, Forth in thy name, O Lord, I go. Amen. 